calloused heart, closed eyes. Take your Bible and turn with me to Mark chapter 9, if you would. Mark chapter 9, verse number 30. They left that place and passed through Galilee. They left what place? The base of the Mount of Transfiguration. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. Because he was teaching his disciples? Jesus taught his disciples in public many times. So what was Jesus teaching his disciples this time that required such privacy? Verse 31. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. Breaking it down into three points, Jesus would be arrested, they would kill him, and then after three days he would rise. We continue to read. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. Two points. They did not understand and they were afraid to ask him. Yet Jesus used simple words. Jesus spoke plainly. So why did they not understand? And another question, why? Were they afraid to ask? Let's move over to the book of Luke. Luke shares the same experience. Luke 9.44 Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Catch it? Listen carefully. Pay attention. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. Luke focuses on this one set of instructions. Jesus would be arrested by men. As compared to Mark's statement, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. After three days, he will rise. Luke 9, verse 45. But they did not understand what this meant. It was hidden from them so that they did not grasp it and they were afraid to ask him about it. Again, they did not grasp it and they were afraid to ask him about it. Jesus was describing what would happen to him, his crucifixion. What Jesus was telling them, though, did not fit in their plans. In fact, they had other plans. Their plan was that Jesus would be king. And the really important thing for them, they would have important positions. But notice, in Luke 9, 44, two verses earlier, we read, Listen carefully, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. Two verses later, an argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Luke 9, 46. Jesus just said, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. And they're arguing over who is the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, the next verse says, took a little child and had him stand beside him. Then he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. The greatest. The greatest. The disciples, those closest to Jesus, were more concerned about their positions, being great, having recognition, than about the promised suffering, death, 
and resurrection of Jesus and their concern with greatness blinded them. Jesus had tried to warn them. He had said, listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. But then they closed their eyes to truth because they were preoccupied with their own agenda. The whole idea of Jesus being like a slain lamb just did not fit in their plans. There was no place for this idea. They wanted a king. They were not willing to even consider what Jesus was telling them. Jesus, after all, was the Messiah. How could anyone arrest Jesus, let alone kill him? It just could not be possible. To be the greatest, to be recognized, to be given authority and honor, special recognition, position, power, influence, we find it in all people groups. But that's not the plan Jesus had for himself. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? Mark 9, 33. But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Matthew chapter 16. At an earlier time, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day, be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Matthew 16, 22. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. You see, if Jesus had allowed Peter, Peter would have encouraged Jesus to cling to comfort and avoid the suffering which he knew was ahead. Peter's concerns were human, human concerns. And Jesus didn't need someone to encourage him with human concerns. Peter was acting as an enabler. Someone who makes it easier, even encourages you in your weakness. Peter was an enabler. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to me be my, my, my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whosoever or whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. This sounds like sacrifice and pain. Whosoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. This doesn't sound like something easy. So Jesus states, What good will it be for someone to gain the world, the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Gain the world, the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Friend, accepting the loss of our dreams and submitting to the plans of God is a sacrifice and with eternal benefit. Matthew 6, 26, Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? money, 
wealth, power, power, position, recognition, sexual intimacy, illicit, outside of marriage. What's the difference between money and wealth? You see, we don't have to have a lot of money to be blinded by it. Even poor people can be blinded by their pursuit of money. And I should add here, comfort and maybe even security can blind us. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. It says, then he will reward each person according to what they have done, not according to what they said was important, but according to what they have done. This is not talking about salvation. That's a free gift. This is talking about recognizing when we have sacrificed, when we have denied ourselves to serve the Lord. Turn with me now to Matthew 17. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. It says, and the disciples were filled with grief. Filled with grief. Jesus was not the one that was filled with grief. The disciples were the one filled with grief. But understand, Jesus did not tell them what was going to happen to fill them with grief. Jesus told them so they would not be filled with grief. But they didn't listen. Why? Because they had their own plans, their own agenda. They had their own solutions. Jesus told them plainly, he would be delivered into the hands of men. They would kill him and he would be raised on the third day. They were so overcome by the first two points, they just did not understand. Here they were beside the peaceful sea of Galilee with the Master, and they chose worry and grief. They preferred their own plans. You see, when we trust Jesus, there is no need to worry. There may be huge problems we face. There may be scary situations that concern us. We can't see the future. Yet we are inclined to worry and to be filled with grief. What did Jesus say? He said, listen. Listen to what I have to say to you. Let the word speak. Listen, did you notice Jesus didn't chastise them for worry or grief? He simply redirected their attention to focus on what really makes sense. This is why I speak to them in parables, said Jesus. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or else they don't understand either. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has been calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. They're just not paying attention. Their heart has become calloused. 
otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. My dear friend, are you worried? Are you filled with grief? Is there something that blinds you? Money, power, wealth, recognition, sexual intimacy, illicit, comfort, security? Or are you willing to deny yourself? To give up your solutions and your plans? Are you willing to accept his will and his timing? Even if his timing and plans are different from yours, even if his plans for you are for greatness through humble service rather than position or office, even if there is discomfort, embarrassment, and humiliation in service, are you willing to face uncertain days when you don't know in advance how things will end, yet you know Jesus knows? Are your eyes closed by what you have set your heart on? Do you have a calloused heart? Do you trust your own plans, solutions, and timelines more than those given by Jesus? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to do differently this week so you can be content the reward comes when Jesus comes. And when he comes, our eyesight will be filled with the glories of heaven. That's where our focus needs to be. Jesus is coming. Remember what we read? Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They might understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. So, seeing, hearing, understanding, turning, and he says, I would heal them. I would heal them from worrying and grief. That's God's plan. Are you willing to give him your worry? and your grief. I hope you are.